Over 100 years ago, Ancoats was a bustling place, full of industry, smoke, noise, and, as Nigel Pavaro has been finding out, gang violence. He's been on the trail of the scucklers. This city continues to assert itself as a centre for brutality and violence, almost without rival throughout England. Troops of young scoundrels go about ready to pick a quarrel with any peaceable passerby. People are afraid to go out at night because of the lawlessness which exists. Sounds familiar? Except we're not talking about today. Gang violence goes back a lot further than you might think. Welcome to Victorian Manchester and Salford. In the late 1800s, the streets are overrun by gangs of young thugs known as scuttlers. For over 30 years, they terrorise the population with constant outbreaks of brutal street violence. Until recently, their names and deeds had been forgotten. But here, at Manchester Central Library, a treasure trove of information has been unearthed. Let's go and see, shall we? Dr Andrew Davis has spent over 15 years researching the scuttling phenomenon which gripped the city. These were often very violent confrontations. They could involve anything between a couple of dozen and as many as three, four, even 500 young people. And they were fighting very much with weapons. They're using knives and the buckle ends of their belts. So how on earth do you go about researching something which took place mostly out of view in the back streets of Manchester and Salford? What we've got here is a register from Strangeways Prison in 1875, and this is a fantastic source for a historian. It's an admissions register, so we're getting the name of each prisoner and the offence for which they've been convicted and the details of the sentence. And then we've got these um, legal records, and this is really rare because it's the only way at all that we'll get a first-hand account by a scuttler of an incident that they've taken part in. Scuttling gangs took root amongst working-class groups of youths with little chance of improvement. In the industrial slums of Angel Meadow, Miles Platting, Greengate and the Adelphi. But few gangs were as feared as those from Ancoats. In the 1870s and 1880s, Ancoats really was one of the worst slums in the world. It was one of the foulest creations of the new industrial age. I've heard it was described as a chimney of the world. That's right. This area would have been covered in a blanket of um, sulfurous fog. And although these mill buildings look really grand and imposing, the streets and courtyards off them were hovels, really, and they were dens of overcrowding, of tuberculosis, of poverty, drunkenness, and violence it was really it was a hell on earth the streets were full of children and they were just resounding with noise all the time the, the din of the factories the shouts of the, of the children so what defined the gang members loyalty was it street factory what was it Scotland gangs were all about territory. We're stood now in Bengal Street in Ancoats at the junction of Jersey Street, and this was the gathering spot of the Bengal Tigers, one of the most notorious of all the Scotland gangs. And within five minutes' walk of here, in any direction, we would run the risk, if we were Bengal Tigers, of entering into another gang's territory. And then would Ancoats, all the gangs from Ancoats, come together to fight, say, a gang in Salford or Openshaw or... That's right. That's right, there were very fierce local rivalries between different gangs within Ancoats, but from time to time they would band together. So if there was an invading army from Salford, then all the different factions in Ancoats would unite under one banner on that day. It's no surprise that alcohol had a role to play in the violence. A lot of young people aged in their mid to late teens were, were drinking quite heavily. And in fact, scuttling gangs gathered inside pubs and beer houses as much as they did on street corners. The rival gangs would arrive en masse, they would put the windows through and challenge the Bengal Tigers to come out into the street. In the early years of scuttling, hundreds of youths clashed in the graveyard of St Michael's. Every gang had its own distinctive look. In the heat and chaos of the battle, this might be the only way of knowing who the enemy was. Members of different gangs wore different coloured neckerchiefs, different types of hats, and some of them wore very dark clothing, others might have worn brown jackets and, and white trousers. Was there a wags element to, the, to, to scuttlers and scuttling? I mean, did, did women play a part at all? There was a lot of fear in the 1880s that lads were driven to ever greater acts of violence in order to impress the young women who were hanging around with the gangs. But one of the most surprising things about scuttling is that actually young women frequently took an active part in the fighting as well. Scuttling might have been ignored had it been contained to just the gangs. 
But when innocent bystanders became targets, public outrage began to grow. Brutality is still in the ascendant. Day after day, the shameful and sickening catalogue runs on. Life in parts of Manchester is as unsafe and uncertain as amongst a race of savages. By the 1870s, the scuttlers are running riot. Decent law-abiding folk are asking, where are the police? They